Hi, I'm Kevin Klein, City Councillor for Charleswood Tuxedo Westwood. I want to bring you inside City Hall and talk to you about the Winnipeg Transit Service. There was uh, a few specifics that I want to touch on. One was an article that was written by Tom Broadbeck of the Winnipeg Free Press um, about some money and where it's gone and how it was used. That type of stuff. I also want to talk about an interview that I heard Wednesday morning on the radio with our finance chair, Councillor Scott Gillingham. Some very uh, interesting talking points, but it seemed very engineered. It didn't necessarily answer the questions, but it did talk about we're going to do some great stuff soon. We really are. Um, and we know what we did with some of that money last year. We, we do know what we did with some of it. So we're going to talk about that as well. And, and really, kind of, uh, I, I want to present to you what I think would be a better approach and obviously get your feedback on that. First and foremost, Tom Broadbeck, who obviously did his research for an article, uh, wrote that transit has had a $180 million profit in the last decade. In 10 years, the surplus has been $180 million. So why are we increasing the rate year after year after year and getting larger profits, but our service is not efficient? We have buses that are full and will pass bus stops and just leave people there because they, they don't have any more room. But we have a profit. Why are we telling some of our vulnerable residents that require the use of handy transit uh, that they can't go to certain places? They can't go to the Assiniboia Downs uh, because it's past the 500 meter rule. If it's 500 meters past the bus stop, we're not taking you. It doesn't matter if it's within the city of Winnipeg, you're not going. So they can't go to the MTS Iceplex. They can't go to Fort White Alive. Think about that. Fort White Alive, one of our biggest treasures. But if you need handy transit, you are not allowed to go. I am sorry. You just can't go. It's too expensive. But this year, we made around a $7 million profit and still told those people, I'm sorry, it's, we don't have the money because the province, the province is terrible. The province won't fund uh, the busing anymore 50-50. They're not doing it 50-50. So the city has never come out and said, well, they're doing it 45-55, or they're doing it 40, or they're doing it 30. Um, they just don't say, right? They don't give us that. Oh, they're leaving it at 2016 levels. Well, that gave you the excuse to certainly raise the bus fare by 25 cents in 2018. Remember that? Huge profit that year. So everyone kind of got scared and council decided in 2019, oh, no bus fare increase. We won't have a bus fare increase. Um, to which they will say I voted against, which is true because in the budget you only have one vote. You can't vote on things independently. So the good things that they do put in the budget, you don't have an opportunity to say, hey, nice job, I will vote to support that because all the other bad things are in there and that you can't support. So anyways, I digress. And then in 2020, we got a five cent increase per ride, and that was put in by the city administration. It doesn't require a council vote if it is the cost of living. But oddly, every year for the most part, for during you know 10 years, cost of living has gone up five cents per ride. It's incredible, the consistency. It's not the right way to do government anymore. This is wrong. You know, um, Tom pointed out the fact that only $25 million, he could only find $25 million of that $180 million that actually stayed and was used in transit. We don't have efficient service. We know that. We hear complaints all the time. We have profits of $7, $10, 12000000 million. So what are you doing with it? Why not improve the service? If we're green, 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 why aren't we improving the service? But this is a smaller part of a big problem. We do the same thing with the North End Treatment Plant. Portage just announced a partnership with the province for millions of dollars to do upgrades at their treatment plant because they have a relationship. They're working together. It's not adversarial. It's not, a, it's not who has the most power or the most votes. It's, it, it's just a relationship because we're here to do that for you. That's part of our job. We take money from parking, $10, $11 million from that. And we said, well, it's because we want to make sure that uh, people use the bus more because we're green. Well, they, they can't get downtown. Buses pass people because they're full. They're at capacity. So why are we not using this money efficiently? 
So on the radio, uh, Councillor Gillingham, who is the finance chair, said, well, you know, we, I think that all the profits from transit should stay in transit. And we've done that in the past. We, we, like in 2019, for example, we put in shields that cost $2 million. I think it was around $2 million, right? I didn't look back. Don't hold me to that number. It was around $2 million. I think we had a $12 million profit. So what happened to the other 10? Where'd it go? He said that what we're going to do is ask for a report so that we can find out where that money's gone over the last 10 years. He's pretty sure most of it was kept in transit and used for capital projects. Pretty sure is not good enough. This is money that could be behind door number one, door number two, or door number three, or door number 50 for that matter. It shouldn't be hidden behind doors. We shouldn't have to ask for a report from the people that didn't tell us in the first place where that money went. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be critical. I've been here for a year and four months and I really ha I haven't been able to grab on to the information they're giving me. Respect is earned. So is trust. And from what I've seen, I, I'm, I'm very suspect. And I, I don't want to be that way, but I am. I came from the private sector where we're suspect of all numbers. We check into it because it's that important. It's more important when it's your money. And you're not just giving it to us. We're taking it. We are taking it from you. So what I would like to see done, this is what I would do. Is I would say, hang on a second. Obviously, we have a, an operation that's uh, at, a, at a huge profit. So I'm going to stop blaming the province, first and foremost, for our bad service. I'm going to stop blaming the province for the fact that we don't have electric buses because we're waiting to test them. They are everywhere around the world now. They make them right here in Winnipeg. Surely we can get on board and start electric buses, but whatever. I would immediately launch a zero-based budget review of transit. If they're making that much of a profit, we need to find out why. We need to find out if money, if there's more money there. I mean, I've talked to bus drivers who will remain nameless, and they said the amount of people not paying, they have a little button or something they have to push, is, is in the hundreds of thousands in a year. But we're still making a profit. We don't really have a strong or a fair and reasonable low-income bus pass. So we're not really doing what's best for our residents, especially the ones that need it most. But we're still making a profit. Zero-based budget review would allow us to look at all of this forensically because that's what we need. We don't need one of the city audits because those are, those are, 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 are not substantial. I'm sorry. Look it up. They are not the same audits that you would see in any other business. These are special ones uh, devised for governments, by governments. Isn't that great? Uh, so I would do that right away and I would start trying to figure out how we use the surplus the profits to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of our transit system. Because then we're providing better customer service. Then we're providing better green options. And you can grow as a city, but only if you have an effective and efficient transit service. And don't talk to me about this major transit master plan that's been going on for a couple of years. Stop. Millions of dollars for what? We should be looking at different modes of transit. Those are my plans. What do you think? What would you do? Or do you like it the way it is? Leave me a message uh, on any one of our social media platforms or send me an email, kevink at kevinkline.ca.